don't don't have an intro but we're back baby we are back in the middle look at this i have, i have literally like a pigeon on my head now there's been no barber for two months in lockdown the rosy rides are here with present to you back a lot of people are like this isn't going to come back to youtube he's only doing it to sell his course he's only doing it for a bit of promotion before his course launches bullshit we're here to stay weekly videos five weekly videos two three four videos a week we're back we are back released a video yesterday with phil galfond doing a high stakes breakdown pre-flop icm today with christoph volgesang where we get owned then the next video is going to be a podcast with a special guest we're going to do some streaming we're back we're here to stay i'm real we are going to be live and active active on the youtube streets so Today's hand is an interesting one. What we're going to be looking today is going to be something which pains me a little bit. So I'm just going to show you the setup. So I'm playing in a $5,000 tournament. Uh, I am third in chips. I have 25 big blinds, 23 plus my two. I raise the cutoff with queen, 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 queen suited. Uh, I, there's so much pain, I can barely even say what I have here. Uh, Christoph Vogelsang in the big blind decides to go for a free bet to 6.7 big blinds. A relatively large free bet when I have 25 big blinds. Uh, so around about two years ago, somebody free bets you, you've got king queen suited, you're just always calling. Now things are a little bit different. In the sims that we look at, ICM kind of dictates to us that we don't want to do too much flat calling of free bets. Typically, we want to do mostly shoving and folding. So if we think we can profitably defend wide enough here, we can profitably shove or have enough hands which shove to defend our range. That's kind of typically broadly how it works. However, there is going to be some calling. However, also moving on from this is that a lot of the sims that you see from a lot of training sites or a lot of browsers or a lot of solvers, they don't show you the EV of your strategy. Your, your strategy is often stopping the other player exploiting you, and it's having a lot of break-even plays in it anyway. So you could potentially make a different strategy to this strategy which you're being presented, and the EV difference of these two strategies won't be that far off. Uh, so I think a lot of people are currently caught up in this kind of mindset of, oh, we need to play exactly like some solvers tell us because it's this output is telling us this is the right play. We're not really seeing the true EV of these outputs. And if our opponents are playing different to what we're expecting, then that's also going to be a big consideration. So in this kind of situation with King Queen suited, naturally the solver will often tell us to go for a four bet or to fold with our entire range. However, in this situation where he's extremely polarized, where his range is pocket queens, pocket kings, pocket aces, ace, king suited, and then loads of bluffs, it doesn't really make sense to shove many hands from a logical point of view. Let's say we have a hand like King Queen suited. When we shove King Queen suited, we're making him fold King Five offsuit, which was bluffing. We're making him always call with Queens Kings Ace King, which dominates us. And we can play in position against Ace Five off. You know that's okay as well. Ace Three offsuit. Of course, shoving and making Ace Three off fold is a pretty big win as well. Uh, if we have a hand, let's say pocket nines, is there really much merit of shoving pocket nines? When we shove pocket nines, he's going to call with queens, kings, aces, ace, king. He's not going to call ace three. We get to play really well against a hand like ace three or against a hand like king six. They're always only going to, they're typically always only going to have one overcard against our pairs. So if I have a hand like eights, nines, tens, jacks, queens, no real point of shoving in this spot. Uh, if I have ace king, do I even really want to shove ace king? If you think about ace king, he's always going to call queens, always going to call kings, always going to call aces. So when I shove ace king, I make him fold his ace threes, his ace sixes. So the thing is, if you don't start shoving ace king, he can start free betting you a lot and putting you under pressure because you're not four bet shoving enough. But typically in a vacuum, if someone free bets you here, you can call it, it, calling ace king will be higher EV in a vacuum than shoving will be. Because we get it in against a really bad range. We get to realize most of our equity anyway with Ace King because of the way it plays post flop. Plus, we can get value against the hand like Ace Three when we both flop an Ace. Or maybe he bets the flop and then maybe we value bet somewhere, whatever happens. So, uh, there's not really too many hands which I'm really ecstatic about shoving. A hand which I think makes a lot of sense to shove is Pocket Kings. Shoving pocket kings makes sense because we make sure we stack pocket queens, we make sure we stack pocket jacks, we 
uh, get him to fold some ace x, which is okay as well. Another hand which is good to shove here is something like ace five suited. When we shove ace five suited, we can make him fold, you know, ace eight offsuit. We realize all of our equity against queens and kings. We block aces, we block ace king, etc. But then again, with ace five suited, we block a lot of the bluff. So lots of trade offs. Typically, what I would say here is that solvers will suggest us to do a lot of shoving. But in reality, in a vacuum, if you're playing against a random guy in a one-off tournament, probably best to do lots of calling. Typically, king queen suited will always be fine to call here. Even if a solver tells you you don't have a calling range, it will be fine to call king queen suited, king jack suited, king ten suited, ace jack suited, ace queen suited, ace ten suited, ace king suited, aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights. He's always going to bet 20% on the flop or 30% on the flop. So we always get to see at least four cards always, essentially. We always get to call the flop and we always get to see at least a turn. So typically all these hands will be quite fine to call. What would happen if we started calling too much? What, what would end up happening in GTO is that he could start using some big sizes on the flop and then we start to not realize enough equity and our calls start to become very leaky. But people don't. People just use very small sizes in ICM because in ICM post-flop, the solvers tell us we must use small sizes. So typically that's what people do. So what I'm going to show you now is what the pre-flop solver would suggest us to do in this situation. So this solver is called Simple Preflop. I highly recommend this. This is such a sick tool. So essentially what you do is you put in all the spots, you say exactly how you should play, you, you put in exactly the stack sizes and the bet sizes, and then you just press load, you press calculate, this button over here, calculate, and then it just does this insane sims, it breaks everything down, it does millions and millions of nodes and iterations, etc., and then just tells you, okay, this is what GTO is. It just gives you the GTO output. I actually did some negotiation with uh, the guys and I've got a discount code in the uh, description box. So if you click on there, I believe you get the biggest discount that you can find for this program. So if you want to get involved, do it. If you don't, fair enough. I'm just going to show you how it works. So we go for the bet from the cutoff uh, for two big blinds. You can see the solver wants to have 0% shoves. So we go for this raise. What we can see here is quite interesting. We can see what all three players should do against our raise. Really nice visualization, right? So when we raise, the button should do no calling. The button should only shove or fold, which is pretty in, in, interesting to see. The small blind, who's Mikita, very interestingly, with his 20 big blinds, he should have a free bet non all in range. And you can see he free bets non all in with aces, kings, queens for value. Ace king suited, ace queen suited for value, which a lot of people may not realize. And then he bluffs some hands like ace 10 off, ace jack off, ace eight suited, ace six suited, ace two suited. No calls. You can see pocket eights is folding, pocket sevens is folding, uh, the under pairs are folding, uh, king queen off is folding sometimes, queen ten suited is folding. So this shows us that ICM, we want to just play really, really tight pre flops. So this is Makita's range. Uh, and this is how Kristoff should play in the big blind. So. The light red is free bet to 6.7 big blinds. The dark red is shove. So we can see twos, threes, and fours go for a shove. People may be like, well, why are you shoving fours but not nines? But fours and nines are exactly the same hand. If we go back to here, we can see that I am raised folding some hands with nines. I'm raised folding queen nine, ten nine, king nine, ace nine. So when he has a hand like pocket twos, he doesn't block any of my raised fold range. So shoving twos is a lot better than shoving nines because it has the same equity against the calling range because I'm not going to just call pocket sixes. So twos and nines plays the same, but he's going to get a lot more folds when he has deuces because he unblocks a lot of my raised folds. So that's an important first takeaway. Ace two to ace four is shoving rather than ace nine to ace seven. And pocket twos and pocket fours are shoving instead of pocket sixes to pocket nines. The reason why also we may want to call pocket nines instead of pocket twos is because we realize a lot more equity when we're in the call node. If I raise and you defend pocket nines, you're going to have top pair or an over pair way more often than you, than you will do with pocket twos. So with pocket nines, it has a lot more post-flop playability as well. So these kind of hands are shoving. We also see queen 10 suited shoving. We also see king 10 suited shoving. We also see queen jack suits shoving. These hands are shoving because when he shoves king 10, I fold king jack. When he shoves king 10, I fold king queen. When he shoves queen jack suited, I fold king queen. I maybe fold ace queen. We're going to see that as well. So this is going to be his shoves. But he also has some bluffs. So he bluffs ace 3 offsuit like he has. He bluffs a7 offsuit, a6 offsuit, queen8 offsuit, jack8 offsuit, queen4 offsuit, king2 offsuit, ace2 offsuit, all at different frequencies. But in this kind of situation, 
Kristoff, amazing, you know, GTO player, he's not going to be like, okay, well, King 2 off is a 5% free bet. Queen 4 off suit is a 50% free bet. A7 off suit is a 30% free bet. A4 off suit is a 20% shove. Typically, what people will do is they will just take a range, like I'm going to show now. Typically, this is a really good way to simplify. So instead of having 50% of some combos, 70% of other combos, 10% of other combos, you can take a block of hands. So you can see that the block here is quite similar. It's, you know, the, the, the ace-x off hands, the king-x off hands. I didn't put the queen-x hands. I think typically you see people mostly choosing the ace-x and king-x in game rather than the jack-sevens, rather than the queen threes. I think people are typically a bit more heavy on ace-x and king-x. It's easier to simplify this way as well, probably. But, you know, if you wanted to maybe take out, you know, some of these uh, and have, like, queen-7 and queen-4, that's okay too. But just typically the way that I visualized... visualized Kristoff's range for free bet non all in would be this for value and then this is a bluff. And if we see the solver here, it's telling us basically the same thing. Something interesting is it's choosing the ace queen suited to induce as well. Uh, that's because if you want to have a lot of bluffs and then you don't have many value hands, then as in position myself, I can just start shoving on you very, very often because you're not incentivized to even be inducing the hand like tens or nines, etc. So that's typically how preflop works. When he goes for the shove, we're gonna see here, when big black, sorry, when he goes for the free bet, we're gonna look at what my response should be. So a lot of people are like, you can't call in position here, but you can see there's actually quite a bit of calling going on. We can see we actually call 12% of the time and we uh, shove 30% of the time and we fold 60%. So when he free bets us, he can imagine to have around about 60% fold equity, and you can imagine that we're going to continue around about 40% of the time. The majority of that time we will be choosing the shove, but we are going to have a bunch of calls. So looking at some hands which can call, we can call queen jack suited, queen 10 suited, king 10 suited, ace 10 suited, ace 9 suited, jack 10 suited, king queen off suit, ace jack off suit, ace queen off suit, aces, nines, eights, sevens. So all of these hands call sometimes and they shove sometimes. So the way that I think I would play my range in position is I would just call a lot more. I don't believe he's going to start, you know, maybe he will, but I don't believe he's going to necessarily start just like blasting off so much against me. <laughs> maybe he will. And really trying to pressurize me and put me into some really, really crazy spot. You know, maybe he will, but typically all these hands are going to have very similar EV as shoves and very similar EVs as calls. So the EV difference between this strategy here, which we're going to look at, the EV difference between this strategy here and uh, this strategy here is going to be so similar. Like the EV of my strategy here, like I don't have some ace queen off, ace jack off. I have I have ace queen suited, ace jack suited. I don't have king queen off. I have king queen suited. Remember, offsuit combos are a lot more than suited combos. So if you have thirty percent of an offsuit combo, that may end up being a full combo. Of, that may be a full frequency of a suited combo. So my frequencies are not going to be that far off actually. Uh, I don't have some ace four suited. I don't have some ace eight suited. I just go a little bit more heavy with, you know, king jack and king queen instead. So this is typically how I would have responded in game. So going to the flop here, you're going to see that I go for the call. Should we speed this up a little bit? I think we should. So on the flop here, I'm going to go for a call. And the flop comes down king four eight. Kristoff decides to go for a range bet of 20%. So you can see here he goes for a 20% bet. What I'm going to do now is show you in Peer Solver how this looks like in GTO land. So we have this thing here. I'm going to make this full screen. So we have the ranges which we've already spoken about, how I view him and how I view my range. So in this kind of situation, I believe he was just C-bet in his whole range. So we can see here that correctly he should just be C-bet in his whole range. I don't have a raisin range in position here. I'm going to play call or fold. Uh, well, that's how I would have played, but in reality, there is a raise in range. So you can see that King Queen suited starts to raise and just get it in, which probably nobody's doing. Um, you know, Pocket Eight is raising and getting it in again, which probably is no one, no one is doing. Uh, bluff raising some Ace Ten to make him fold some combos, um, raising Aces for value, all that kind of stuff. But typically, I think I'm going to play mostly just call uh, in game. That's how I would have played. So we're gonna speak about this later anyway but i go for the call here the turn is a nine and he has a very very bad hand now in my opinion so the hands which i have here i have pocket eights which is a set pocket nines which is a set king queen which is strong king jack which is strong king ten which is strong 
aces, which are strong. The hands in my range, which I have at this point, which are not very strong, if we look at the ranges here, in position range. So this is a really strong hand. This is a really strong hand. These are pretty strong hands. This is a really strong hand. These are really strong hands. This is a really strong hand. So the, the three hands in my range, which are really weak at this point, is ace-10, ace-jack, ace-queen. So when he's bluffing, typically, he wants to not block those hands while still blocking some value hands. So let's say I have a hand like ace-queen of hearts. I'm always going to continue the turn with ace-queen of hearts. So if he has ace of hearts free, he has a really nice turn barrel because he blocks my aces. He blocks my ace queen of hearts, my ace jack of hearts, my ace ten of hearts. So a really good combo to choose. If I have ace queen of clubs, I probably just fold the flop. If I have ace jack of clubs, I probably just fold the flop. If I have ace ten of clubs, I probably just fold the flop. So the hands which I get here, which I will fold with, would be uh, ace x of spades and ace x of club, ace x of diamonds. So in game, I expected him to only keep barrel in the turn when he has ace of hearts or ace of clubs in his hand, not when he has the ace of spades or ace of diamonds. So when he bets, I'm quite concerned at this point because I know he should have a lot of give ups uh, because my range is very strong in position. But he bets 520 and I'm like, oh dear. Let's have a look at what Pia Solver says here. So I go for the call in the turn is the nine of hearts. Sorry, I just didn't remember it. The nine of hearts, and let's see how you should play. Uh, okay, so nine of hearts, let's look at a hand like ace three offsuit. So, per perfect. All the ace x of spades should give up. All the ace x with diamonds should give up. When he has the ace of clubs, it's really good because he doesn't block the folds. And when he has the ace of hearts, it's really good because he blocks the continue. So this is basically, I think he has ace of spades, three of clubs. So like, I expected him to check always with this hand. So going on the turn versus a bet, I'm already like somewhat concerned. Um, but I can't fold. I think in my mind here is also that he can have king six, king seven, king five, king three, king two, and be bluffing preflop and still be like betting for like value merge, not merging, but like just betting again, you know, keeping control of the pot, getting value against my ace queens, ace jacks, ace tens, my pocket tens, my, you know, whatever the hands which is in my range. Um, so I still call with the king queen here. Uh, I take my time like I would do with all, all the combos in my range. Then the river is the ten of clubs. River is the ten of clubs, and he goes for a show. So at this point, I think if he has the ace of hearts in his hand, he will never bluff because the hands which I'm going to fold on the river are going to be ace queen of hearts, ace jack of hearts, ace ten of hearts. Like mostly, like that's my first fold on the river. Ace queen of hearts is my first fold on the river. So. If he gets to the turn here of ace of, ace of clubs and ace of hearts, I believe all of the ace of hearts are going to give up. So he's only going to bluff when he has ace of clubs, X. Like this is his only bluffs, in my opinion, at this this time. He also has the king X as well. Like he has a hand like, uh, you know, king five, king six. I don't think this is going to bluff. That would be kind of silly. So the only hands I think he bluffs with at this point is ace of clubs three, ace of clubs two, Ace of clubs five, ace of clubs seven. These are the only combos I think he can have. If he has a hand like queen seven offsuit, I think he just checks the turns. Like if he does get to the turn with say queen seven, I think he would just fold. Jack seven actually is a straight now, which is quite an interesting thing as well. So he goes all in. Now I'm left with 11 big blinds. He has 16, he has 20, he has 85 and Kristoff has like 20 remaining so if i call and win i have a massive stack if i fold i'm left as a short stack and if i call and lose i'm out so at this point i'm questioning where am i in my range at this point where, where, where exactly am i in my range at this point pocket eights is a set pocket nines is a set if we go back to the range that we spoke about earlier if we, let's let's look at the imposition range here. So uh, let's go back to the flop. So on the flop here, imposition range. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm an idiot. So pocket eights is a set. It's better than king. It's better than king queen. Pocket nines is a set. It's better than king queen. Pocket tens is a set. It's better than king queen. Pocket jacks and queens is worse than king queen. King ten is two pair. King jack and king queen same hand. Ace ten, ace jack, ace queen. Like, these hands I'm mostly folding, unless I have it turned to flush draw, so I don't really have these hands remaining. 
And then ace is an ace king is better than king queen. So once we get to the turn here, uh, the nine of hearts, this goes for a bet. Uh, by the way, king queen always calling, obviously, versus the turn bet. And you can see here that I'm folding my ace jack unless I have. Uh, I'm folding ace jack unless I have hearts. I'm calling the other ones like 20% time. I'm mostly folding these hands. Same with ace 10. Uh, so I call and the river. Let's just have a look at my range here as the imposition. So getting to this point, I fold jacks already on the turn. Tens is a set on the river. Nines is a set on the river. Eight is a set on the river. Kings is a set on the river. King 10 is a two pair on the river. Ace king suited is a better hand than king queen and it blocks aces. Aces is obviously the stone cold nuts. So king jack, king queen, and ace queen are like my weakest hand, and pocket queens are my weakest hands at this point. So I didn't feel like I was actually like super far up in my range anyway. But let's have a look at what I ended up folding. Spoiler alert. But I tank and tank and tank and tank and tank. Daily reminder to drink some water, stay hydrated whilst you're watching me tank. And then I fold. And then I fold. <sighs> Disaster. Ace free fucking Austin. I hate to see it. <laughs> so the river was the 10 of clubs, I believe. Was it the 10 of clubs? Doesn't really matter too much of the suit, I don't think. So on the river here, we can see that his ace x hands on the river are just typically given up. So when he has a hand like ace of hearts x, he's just always given up. He doesn't bet the turn with the ace of spades x. He doesn't bet the turn with the ace of diamonds x. Uh, and he may he will bluff the river. He doesn't even bluff the river with a hand like ace two with the ace of clubs. Like this is even given up quite a lot. So, yeah, kind of an interesting spot. So, anyway, he goes all in, and then we can see here, pretty nicely, hopefully, uh, we can see here that king-queen suited, king-jack suited, they are very indifferent, and they're actually folding 50% of the time. So, obviously, if I node-locked and made Kristoff start to bluff the turn with all the ace of spades and all the ace of diamonds, then I would have to call the river because he's just going to be way too much out of line, right? Like, this combo is not really a combo which you would naturally expect to get here. Um... So I would, with him exploiting me, I guess, then I, I should call, I guess, you know, because he's going to be too bluff heavy in this spot. I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying the line of, I just expected him to play GTO, you know, I don't mean it like that. I just mean, I, I didn't, I, I expected him to not have many combos to bluff. So when I did get to the river and I made a video of this, I, I put all these videos in the course, by the way, go check it out. I, I really love these four videos of the course. I, I record every hand live with commentary from like uh, 50 players till the final table. And there's loads of six bots going on the whole final table. I would really recommend it. Uh, link will be in the description too. We have so many links, so many links. I'm a business salesman these days. I'm folding King Queen, so I have to, I have to make money somehow, right? Uh, so yeah, where was I? Yes, yeah, so I basically didn't think he'd get to the river with many attractive bluff candidates. I, in the video, I do say, okay, his bluffs are ace of clubs six, ace of clubs five, ace of clubs three. Does he have these hands? It's three or four, it's it's not that many combos of them. He has, at the other side of the coin though, he doesn't have many value combos. He has aces, pocket kings, ace king, king eight, king four. Like there's not many value combos in there. So a good lesson here is, if someone gets to the river with so few value combos, you should call them very often because even if they're a tight player, it's just so, so easy to get out of line because we can see here in PS Solver again, we can see here that uh, these combos are like, even the really, really attractive combos, they're still giving up the river a lot. And the reason why they're giving up the river a lot is because they're not, va they're not incentivized to do much value betting. And you can see here, even aces and ace king is not incentivized to do too much value betting either. Like these hands are also going to check a lot. So you may say that, okay, well, he will bluff more. But in reality, probably he will value bet more as well. So it'll kind of compensate. Uh, it'll kind of compensate in that degree, I think. Okay, so what I've done here is I've node locked his strategy. So on the 10 of clubs, what we can see here is I've made him shove all these hands for value. Kings, aces, ace king, ace king all for value. I have him checking king eight sometimes, which is two pair, uh, This and king nine sometimes, which is two pair. Uh, and I've made him bluff at a higher frequency with all of these combos. So all the ace x, which were given up before, I've now made him bluff 35% of the time. When this happens, what we get to see is that king queen suited becomes a pure fold. King jack suited becomes a pure fold. We don't call any of these hands, and we would definitely fold. So this is kind of how I would have imagined he played in game. Like, 
Bluff in his hands sometimes, and you know, always value shoving these hands. What I'm gonna do next is make all of these hands always bluff, and then show you what may happen to the difference of my strategy and position. Okay, so this is now how we would play if he's bluffing all of these combos at full frequency. We would even call a hand like pocket queens because we just unblock all the ace x. He's never bluffing with a queen in his hand. He's just bluffing too much. So when someone's bluffing too much, we just always go. We can see we'd fold ace queen, ace jack, ace ten because they're blocking his bluffs. We have any hand which beats the bluffs and unblocks them. We would just call all of these hands. So even if we had a hand here like pocket sevens on the river, we would still probably end up calling in a weird way. Whereas we're going to just fold these ace queen, ace jack, ace ten. So this is if he's going absolutely bananas we should fold the king queen but typically uh just pull up the solve again here in gto land uh with the ranges which i expect we can imagine that uh we can imagine that we should be folding here around about half the time if he is always value shoving the top of his range and still playing passive with the other range maybe we can start exploit folding all of our king queen all of our king jack um, what I'd like to say is I was probably folding too much of this in game. Um, well, I may have called around about 50% of the time. You, you'll see in the video that I'm I am very close to calling as well. Um, I think in these kind of situations where there's a lot of emotion in game, where you really is he fucking with me? Is he not fucking with me? Is he thinking I'm tight? Is he thinking I'm loose? Is he does he have the right combos? Does he not have the right combos? In these kind of spots where you only have 60 seconds and you're making a decision for massive amounts of money, it is good to randomize 50-50 because a lot of the time these marginal calls, like a king jack, like a king queen, they will be kind of like a sometimes a call, sometimes a fold, depending on different factors. So taking your emotion out of the game and putting it up to an RNG, I think most of the time is a good decision, especially against players who you believe are very strong. If you're playing against very weak players or amateurs or players you believe you have a very big edge on, you should always trust your intuition. Um, but yeah, we've gone through a few stuff here. We've gone through the simple preflop stuff. We've gone through the peer solver ICM stuff. Um, we've gone through the different ranges. We've gone through the footage. I'm back on the YouTube streets. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, let me know. Let's speak in the let's speak in the comments. We've got some catching up to do. Uh, if you didn't, then press a press a thumbs down. I can take it, no problem. Uh, let me know what other content you want to see. You know, like uh, let me know. Do you want more podcasts? Do you want more hand reviews? Do you want more ICM hand reviews? Do you want more Chippy V hand reviews? Do you want more PSKO hand reviews? Anything you want, I shall give. Command me what content you want. I'm gonna end this now anyway. Thanks so much for being in the mixer. I recommend the course. And if you want to study by yourself, I'd recommend the the simple preflop. It's really nice. If people want, I can also do maybe a tutorial of how to use simple preflop. Uh, shout out to Andy as well, by the way, big helper uh, with this stuff. Um, but yeah, very very grateful to be back. Very happy. I almost don't want the video to end because I just love being doing these YouTube videos. But I'm gonna end it. If I don't end this video in five seconds, I'm going to send everyone hundred dollars who's watching. Five, four, three, two.